Turn mullets, deep thoughts, and some really bad fashion. You'll see it all around the net. Then we'll finish up our pocket video showdown when we aim, point, and shoot the flip minnow HD camcorder. Find out if this tiny camera is worth its weight in Gadgetron. I am so excited to review it. I love them. I have like eight. Why? Because um, I need one for my car, one for a couple they're, different purses. They're portable. You just take no, it I know, with but you. I don't like to. I don't like to like move things. I'm like, it's in there. I'll get, I grab it here. I grab it there. <laughs> Plus, have you ever wanted to make music with an arcade controller? Don't worry about answering that because we already know the answer is Hells yeah! No one said yes. Okay. On today's musical playtime, we'll make your dreams come true with the VCI 100 arcade controller. You're welcome. And Gillian Jacobs from Community will be here live in studio. So Twitter your questions for Gillian to at AOTS. And now everybody get in our creepy web van come on in we have around the net videos and candy <laughs> what goes around comes around especially boomerangs uh -oh. How could they not see that coming? It's a boomerang, you know? It's, uh, yeah, it's That's what it does. It's, it's designed to, to come back at yeah. you. That's what they do. Well, may maybe, they just, maybe they thought that it didn't work outside of Australia. That's, maybe that's, that's yeah, ridiculous. Right? <laughs> Thanks, Marcos. That makes no sense. No, I guess. Because, well, I'm just saying, you know, I'm saying maybe their thought process was like, it's like, you know, the toilets flush one way. Like, maybe they don't, don't really try work. To look, they, work outside Australia. Of, they work outside of Australia. I'll show you right now. Let me use what my I got my pocket boomerang. No, 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 no. Well, no, no, it's fine. No, no. No, 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 we can't use it because we've got, like, plazas over here. It's very expensive. Olivia, so you throw it, you don't catch it. First of all, I'm an expert. Have some faith. Second of all, pocket boomerang. You're no. fine. No, here no, we no, go. no, 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 no. Oh! I got it. Oh! Let me do. Let me do. Kevin, Kevin, did you grab the air above? Wait. Olivia. <laughs> did you grab the air above Olivia. the boomerang? If you don't you understand, stop it with force above it? you obviously obviously do not understand how the pocket boomerang works. I mean, it was it was flying like this, and you stopped it here. No, I did not you stop it. it. If you look here. back at the tape, I was pocket boomerang. Oh! And oh! 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 little bit of Aussie magic for you, and then I pound my my oh, Fosters. Kevin. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to take that shot right then. I didn't know they were going to do that. You guys ruined the illusion. They ruined the illusion. Hey, your magic is real to me. Thank you. Doves. Now for my scarf trick. I'm just kidding. And in a <laughs> that would have been awesome if we would have had some. <laughs> Never. In number four, a clip from YouTube user Speed Stacking Girl of get this, a girl speed stacking. What? So, so you're telling me it's not just a clever screen name? <laughs> no, that's what she does. Right, I get it. I get so it. <laughs> she, she moves really fast and sets a new record. But the remarkable part of this clip isn't her stacking speed. It's it's her reaction. Yes! Oh my gosh! 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 Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh! 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 Yes! 
Okay, we get it. We get it. Look what I did, Internet. My parents will finally love me. <laughs> no, they won't. Oh. It said that no one was cheering, but there's just her. That was just her in a room and a couple of trophies herself. and some chemistry books. Now, now, <laughs> to be fair, I, I'm not sure that rapidly rearranging plastic cups merits that extreme no, response. No, finding out you're not the father on Maury, that, that warrants that response. <laughs> Do you think she's going to be the coolest girl in line for Twilight, I bet. Ah! Oh, look at this! Ah! She said, I've seen, people, I've seen people quickly move red cups like that in college, and those cups were full of beer, and yeah, a lot of it wound up on the floor, but they did it drunk, okay? That's a real American hero. Maybe one day she'll have more. No, I don't have... They took away the ladder. <laughs> now, a little while back, we brought you some of the gold that was mine. Uh, video dating. Uh, oh, it was good. I love these. Some good stuff. I love these. Um, and today, today, there are actually more gentlemen callers ringing the Internet's doorbell. Mm. <laughs> My doorbell rang in action. You're so strange today. When I walk into the door, a little binocular. You've got a mm, lot of... Ringing that door. What's wrong with... What, binaca? What? I think it's just you. It wasn't a euphemism. I was actually ringing the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case it was broken. Okay, so I want to go back to the video dating because it's pretty awesome. So, ladies out there, I know you're out there listening. Put on that special dress you like to be creeped out in because you've got an awkward date in Awkward Town. Hello. Thought I told you never to call me here. I have a very strong sense of humor. I read recently that everyone thinks they've got one, but my friends do agree that I do. Might not appear it, but. Um, Semi-crazy. Uh, kind of your typical research mathematician, I guess. I'm a ham. I've been on Jeopardy. I decided that I'm lonely. But I'd love to go roller skating. Are you a little crazy? Uh, extremely high verbal skills. Co-ed bubble bath sounds like a real fun idea I want to try out. I'm particularly attracted to black women and women of different races. So if you like me, give me a call. <laughs> yeah! All right. That. Oh, uh, the guy with the flower in the beginning. Such a dude. Hello. It's the man of your dreams, you know darling. I, I, I'm pretty sure those, those videos were made in the 80s, and I'm pretty sure all those guys are still single. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the ones who have been caught are probably, like, very affectionate cellmates. So. Yeah. <laughs> I hope the one found an ethnic or a black cellmate. I bet, yeah, I, I bet he did. I like the black ones or the ethnic ones. <laughs> Uh, today's number two item is an inventive use of editing from the staff of The Tonight Show. Now, as everyone is aware of by now, former three-quarters governor of Alaska, Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue, came out this week, and she's been doing a full-on media tour to promote it. Yeah, and if you're going to try to sell a book, the one show you absolutely have to do is, of course, Oprah. So Palin sat down for a one-on-one -on -one with the queen of daytime television. But as Conan shows us, maybe she was just a little bit too eager to answer some of the questions. I still don't know why you stepped down. Why not just finish what you started? Well, I left because I just couldn't handle the governor's desk. I resigned as the governor of Alaska because I'm a quitter. I was not qualified, that I was ill prepared. I was naive. I was lame. I never really went to hockey games, too. And Todd and I love unprotected sex. We've always had, I guess, unconventional relationships. Physically, Todd will plow through me for hours, and I'm pumped up, just over the top, pumped up with energy and porn. Yes. So, um, after all that, wow. Thank you. Uh, wait. So we're... Right? No, I don't... Where, where were the edits? Ah, very, uh, very funny, Kevin. I, seriously, I didn't see any edits there. I mean, we show the right clip. <laughs> I get oh. Still oh. ahead, Star Wars gets extreme. Oh no, so, so it's my bad. And if you ever dreamed of visiting oh, a so galaxy far, far away, you better watch this tourism ad first. Well, why am I? I'm a jerk because I didn't get it. today is a tourism video for the planet of Dagobah. Yeah, you may remember the planet from The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It was a hellish Sith hole covered in swamp slugs and dragon snakes. But the tourism board of Dagobah, they want you to rethink the planet. Now it's a galaxy-wide vacation destination. Yeah, that's it. Dagobah. 
Yes. I'm sure it's perfectly safe for droids. Think again, mother it's the galaxy's most extreme vacation destination. Are you tired of bird watching on Yavin every summer? Then get your ass to the only outer rim planet that guarantees the most high impact recreation. Swing on a vine. Dago bam. Flip over log. Dago booyah. Battle a creepy vision of your own Sith Lord father. Dago badass. You're not already. Cloud City's for old people. Hoth is for pussies. And Endor, <laughs> go to yourself. So catch the next freighter to the Dago bus system and leave your Void at home. Paid for by the Dagobah Tours Bureau. Yeah! Dagobah! Yeah. I like that. That's fine. Yeah. But I don't know if it's really going to work for rebranding the planet, but. It's well, fine. Re remember when we tried to get people excited to, to come into the studio? I mean, that's the same thing. Oh. Do you like Attack of the Show? Do you want to see Attack of the Show? <laughs> then come to the Attack of the Show studio on your next vacation. What plasmas? We've got them. Robots are everywhere. The dead cell phones hang from the ceiling. Check out those concrete floors. Enjoy the frigid air conditioning. See Olivia Munn ask for water from an intern. See Kevin Pereira expose himself to an intern. Come and join us at the Attack of the Show studio. Please note, do not join us in the studio. There is no room for you. What for us? Gilly liked what he saw. Didn't he? Am I right, Gilly? You know, right, you know what, Olivia? Am I right, Gilly? You know what? That's right, Gilly. They always do. <laughs> they always do. <laughs> to get your daily viral fix and to check out all the viral videos we have to offer, go to g4tv.com slash around the net. You know what's fun? What? Hold on, let me read it. Allow me to read it. <laughs> no, you know what's fun? No, really. I, what? You what? and a friend hitting some balls around. Oh. Ping pong is very enjoyable. Yes. And we had a very special member of our viewer army, our friend Miles Robbins, cover a crazy Rocky, Rocky Horror Picture Show event at Susan Sarandon's ping pong bar. It's called Spin. Susan, call me. No, seriously, 805-268-7123. That's 805-268-7123. <laughs> Attack of the show, this is Miles Robbins. I'm here at Spin New York, the world's greatest ping pong club. And tonight is the first annual Halloween extravaganza hosted by Susan Sarandon. It's a Rocky Horror Picture Show fun time of debauchery and ping pong. So it should be fun. Let's check it out. Spin is the rare place where you'll find ping pong and beautiful women in the same room. I'm here with Susan Sarandon, owner extraordinaire of Spin New York. Tell me about Spin. Spin is a um, ping pong club slash bar, and you can um, do all sorts of things here. I'm here with Kevin and Olivia, uh, hanging out, watching them some ping pong, uh, having a good time. Olivia, get down from there. I'm in the DJ booth with uh, DJ K Pair, who uh, is spinning tonight's festivities. Pun absolutely intended. Olivia will not stop talking. I have to get out of there. All right, um, we had a fun night here. It was great. We saw some great matches, some funky costumes, and some beautiful women. It's been New York, Halloween party. Thanks so much, Attack the Show, for enlisting me in your viewer army. Uh, come check out Spin New York. Thank you, Miles. Ones. I know. Yeah. I have to tell you, I'm wearing a spin t-shirt right now. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is the Magnus effect. It's how the ball bounces. I bet it is. I bet it is. <laughs> and by wearing it, you've actually made the amount of money I'll get for it on eBay go up by thousands of dollars. So thank you for that. By the way, call me Susan. <laughs> What did you just do with your mouth? I was told blowing blowing air through your lips makes you sexier. But when your mouth is pursed together, not you're like you're like. Oh, I thought I thought. Put hold your, on, put, what are you put, talking about? Put your mouth. If, if I close my mouth, my cheeks poof. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. And I got now, it. I got it. For a dramatic change of topic, oh. pocket camcorders. 
Is that dramatic? Like the Highlander, <laughs> there can be only one. Oh. So which is the best? That's why the Lord invented Gadget Prime. Ah! <laughs> oh, come on. They didn't hear that. We're fine. Let's go. So, <laughs> you love taking video of people, but you hate Father, lugging around. Father. <laughs> okay. You hate carrying around big stuff. Here's the, the new Minnow HD. Yes. Just go. Maybe just. No, go. Okay. <laughs> Roll. Now. <laughs> the original pocket camcorder is back, and this time, it's personal. The Flip Minnow HD. At only .66 inches thin, this little cam is ready to go anywhere at any time. And it records up to 120 minutes of 720p high-def footage. Plus, it's even easier to use with a larger 2-inch screen, built-in editing software, and HDMI out. The Minnow HD is coming for you at 230 bucks. Okay, I already love this already. It's got this really great finish on the front. Mm -hmm. The flip is a little bigger than the Vado, but still smaller than the Kodak right here. Can you see this? Oh, I love it. Easy. It's about 0.66 inches <laughs> thick, only two inches across, weighs almost six ounces, which is twice the Vado. Um, now, for a girl, it doesn't really matter because I throw it in my purse, and I actually sure. like, I love the way this feels. What about you? Do you well, think for you, it doesn't matter because you buy 25 of them and leave them around. You treat cameras like they're packages of Tic Tacs, apparently. But, um, uh, <laughs> No, this thing, uh, I actually like this. Look, yeah, it's a little heftier, a little little heavier than some of the other cameras we've shut off, but it doesn't feel unnecessarily heavy. It feels like Great. a solid piece of technology in your hands. Um, and I actually kind of like it. Like... Yeah, and the other thing, with, with the, when these things get too light, they get sort of flimsy in your hands. Mm -hmm. This has a nice solid feel, so you can get a nice nice grip on it. So okay, I now the, the Vado and the Z8, they, they, felt, they did feel a little cheap. Yeah. This doesn't feel like that at all. Um, do you feel like it has any kind of setbacks at all? No, not really. I mean, the buttons on the back, the little touch buttons, work really yeah. well. And it makes the entire unit feel incredibly sleek. Um, our only complaint, though, is that you can't adjust the video quality or output settings. So you're mm. kind of stuck with what they give you. Um, but it's as, good quality. It is That's good quality, which we'll get to, yes. It's not a bad thing to be stuck with. Um, as for the software, it's just as easy to use as the other camcorders. You can upload to Facebook or YouTube or pretty much any other site, um, as well as uh, make simple movies with titles. Now, we uploaded another sample video to G4's YouTube channel if you guys want to pull it up and judge. You can also email a link to your video rather than attaching a huge file. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of that because I don't necessarily love Flip's video sharing service. I think they should give you the ability to like embed and easily share and download the mm -hmm. videos. Like, what if I want to keep that video? Um, so what are they? Minor gripe. They just I mean, have you just put it up and give it to everyone. Yeah, else. I mean, someone would have to like click and drag the file and email it to you, but there's no, there's no link to download it from their site once mm. it's compressed. So it's a oh. tiny gripe, but, you know, hey, okay. it does this. Whoa! Because it flips. Wait, it's make a, it. It's a nerd shit. Make it flip. <laughs> so the Kodak's video quality from last week was only okay. The Vado was better. So we're getting better and better and better. Can we say that this is now the best? Yes, yes. We are keeping it with the momentum. Nice, the best. N normal light footage has incredible detail and color. Um, it looks all around impressive for just a tiny camera, really for any camera. Um, also relatively stable, even while moving or running, as you're seeing here. Um, not that bad. Low light footage also looks great. Exposure is even. What are you doing, you crazy boy? There's very boy? little grain. That's a break moment about to happen right there. Um, very little blur as well in the dark. And, um, you know, th both of which were prominent in other camcorders. So the flip performed incredibly. Well. Okay, I love the way this feels. Yeah. Now, it is the most expensive in our showdown at $230. Yeah. Okay, now a lot of them are like $150. Yeah, yeah. Like that this area. one's pricey. Uh, it's got a lot of good things, so does that mean it's worth it? It's pricey, but worth it. There it is. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's what, okay. What Shatner said about you. I say about the flip. Uh, the video is an expensive whore? Well, no, just ex expensive, but worth it. Worth every dime, this flip right here. The video quality is surprisingly great. The design and interface is second to none. The only drawback is, of course, that it's pricey, but we're still giving it a four out of five. So good job, Flip. It, it, it did. Just made it a little bit cheaper. Would have been five out of five, right? Four and a half. Four, four and, and a half. half. A little bit We'd have bumped it up, yeah. yeah. But then if you wait a little bit, it'll go down. Inevitably. That is true. It, it probably will. There'll probably be a Black Friday deal or 12 on these things. Yeah. So I, I just want to recap because this is the end of our pocket video showdown. Please. Uh, so the Kodak Z8 only got three seals because it had mediocre video quality. Mm -hmm. The Creative Vado HD got four because it had a good quality and a great price. The Flip Meno HD also got four because even though it has the best video quality, it's the priciest. So uh, basically, if your concern is great video quality, you cannot go wrong with the Flip. Absolutely pick it up. But if you want to save a little money, go with the Vado. It's a perfectly viable contender. There you have it. There it is. Bye. That's a great review. That's it.
it for Gadgetron, and remember for even more of the latest news on computers and tech, check out the all-new G4TV.com slash the feed. Now, when college life gets out of control, there is only one number you need to call. <laughs> no. What? Just call me. No, you call the campus PD. It's oh, a, okay. Actually, it's, it's G4's newest original series. Oh, right, 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 right. right along right. with okay. the men and women who patrol college towns and universities across the country. Right, log on to the all-new G4TV.com slash Campus PD to find out what campuses will be turned into cops when it premieres on December 9th. Still ahead, Sir Jeremy will explain the difference between Asian <laughs> and European dragon. And I didn't then, know that we're Asian European. Grab your cans, everybody. Musical playtime will bust out a custom DJ tool with friggin' arcade buttons on it. And later, Gilly and Jacobs from Community will be here live in our studio. You'll get close credit for this, and so make sure you take notes. Future Mrs. Pereira. <laughs> Live, doing pretty well. I think it's maybe Did time Susan for some call news. You yet? Huh? Did Susan call you? Oh, she, when doesn't she? Constantly oh, blowing it up what left and right. Now, she, you know, the usual hey, what's up, Mr. Kiss, blah, blah, blah. Blair Herter is here. Hey, Blair. I'm just going to, let's just go straight to the feed. <laughs> All right, it is Thursday, November 19th, and here are your top stories brought to you by Foot Locker. <laughs> Today, during a press event that was streamed live for everyone to see, Google unveiled its new OS, Chrome OS. The, it's, this operating system owes much of its appearance and functionality to, of course, Google's Chrome web browser, and like nearly everything Google, it is free, which means it may turn out to be the best choice for netbooks and inexpensive desktops. At the event, Google emphasized Chrome's OS's speed with a live demo of its Wait for it, seven second boot time. And no need for a big hard drive because nearly all the data is stored in the magical Google Cloud. It's up there. The Chrome OS beta is available now, but you'll need to be running Linux to build it, or you can just wait for its official release later on this year. And AOL is looking for a few volunteers to get fired. This morning, the company sent out a memo asking for 2,500 employees to voluntarily walk the plank as part of the company's restructuring because one way or another, the internet giant must eliminate 2,500 jobs. Now, those who sacrifice themselves will get a larger severance package than anyone that stays and is later laid off. And in related news, the overall downsizing at AOL isn't just affecting people. AOL may also be selling off MapQuest to Microsoft. Does that mean that MapQuest gets a severance package? Because it's just a program. Do, do, you, do you, can you pay programs? That's a stupid question, Blair. Moving on. And finally, automatic closed captioning is coming to YouTube. Using technology similar to Google Voice, uploaded videos will now be automatically subtitled. Users can enable captions by clicking on a new CC button at the bottom right menu of the YouTube player. While this is obviously a benefit to the hearing impaired, it could also help users understand videos that were made in other languages thanks to the system's ability to translate the subtitles into 51 different languages. On the other hand, though, knowing the content of some of those videos, there's some things I really would rather not understand. Chinese butt humping video. You. I'm Blair Herter, and you have just been fed. Back to you guys. Thank you, Blair. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, just want to say real quick, with regards to uh, the uh, Google Chromium operating system, it's actually coming out next year, later next year. So oh. be on the lookout. Set your clocks for later. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know what doesn't get much mainstream media coverage, Olivia? Oh, tea baggers. No, no. No, dragons. Dragons. Oh, how, how about tea bagging dragons? We what need, you know, you know what? Just, we really need more coverage of that. Can you, you just imagine? You need to just stop. Like, no, stop. Oh, because, Olivia. Just like damn. Olivia. You're no. Like, no, fire breather. Dragons oh. don't bend at the knees like that. You're, no, you're I'm tea bagging the dragon. No, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> your words are going to burn the ears of G4's resident dragon expert. Oh, Sir Jeremy. Sir Jeremy. My apologies. In my countless travels, I've been asked by many a fellow adventurer, which are sweeter, European dragons or Asian dragons? European dragons have giant bat-like wings and live in awesome caves or holes burrowed deep in the earth where lamers can't reach them and they're sweet, sweet treasures. Asian dragons have elongated bodies and can fly even though they normally don't have wings. How are they flying? Magic? That's a little unbelievable. 
European dragons are evil and usually end up scoring the hottest chicks as sacrifices from locals who don't want to be plundered. Asian dragons don't care much for hoarding treasures and are a symbol of intelligence and power and are usually summoned when farmers need rain. In summation, Asian dragons, while still sweet, are less sweet than European dragons. Plus, what's up with those f***ing mustaches? Now, normally I would find these ethnic dragon stereotypes offensive, but seriously, our dragons are magical. <laughs> and now, Kevin, he's going to be musical. Gather around, children. Today we're venturing into a new music scene called Controllerism, and to help us do that, we're actually taking a look at the VCI 100 Arcade Controller. It's a custom DJ tool with friggin' arcade buttons. The future of music is changing as we know it, and it's the hackers who are at the forefront of these changes. Hence the birth of controllerism, the use of software controllers such as keyboards and joysticks to create music. Just as a DJ uses two turntables and a mixer to scratch, effect, and mix music, a controllerist uses software and a controller to do the same and a whole lot more. Underground artist Moldover was the first to bring the concept to reality in 2007 by modifying his MIDI keyboard into a custom audio controller. Groundbreaking DJ Ian Golden then took the idea further by adding arcade buttons to a Vestax controller known as the VCI 100. This connects to a computer running the audio software tractor and allows for hot cues, loops, auto sync capabilities, and a plethora of other effects. From DJing a set using a Guitar Hero controller to wirelessly mixing with an iPhone, controllerism has changed the definition of DJ forever. Which is why we are in the front row and ready for some musical playtime. With me today from DJTechTools.com, ladies and gentlemen, DJ Ian Golden is here. I'm, I'm bowing your presence, sir. Um, first of all, if you're not familiar with, with uh, Ian's blog, you need to go there. If you're, even if you're not a fan of, of DJing or turntablism, if your ears like things that make pretty noises, go and check it out. Congrats on the amazing blog. Thank you. Um, but in addition to being a master of WordPress, you also created a, a pretty insane piece of equipment. What is this guy? Uh, this is my baby. This is the VCI 100 Arcade Edition. So we make these for people with custom arcade buttons of your choice, and they enable creativity and through controllerism and DJ software. So what does this do in comparison to like a traditional DJ setup? Because I've seen mixers that look like this before, obviously not with the arcade buttons. Sure. Uh, where does this stand out? So. What uh, we've essentially done here is taken two turntables and a mixer, mm -hmm. condensed them into a smaller space, and then underneath the surface of those pretty common controls, we've enabled a lot of really sort of futuristic controls that allow you to play your music in very musical and fun ways. Okay, so for example... Uh, how does this interface with the software? What does this let us do that a traditional mixer may not? Sure. One example would be if I play a beat, what we've done is we've programmed the crossfaders and the faders to actually control effects. <laughs> okay. And you have two spin pads as well. I saw you using those. Traditionally, that's used to scratch or cue up a song. Exactly. You can also assign those to effects? Absolutely. We can, again, cue up that beat. What it's going to do is sample the beat. <laughs> oh, that's what it's going to do. I love that. It's like a cooking show. You're like, just add some strawberries. It's that easy. And like, oh, okay, sweet. Um, and, and these four arcade buttons, why arcade buttons? Because is there something that you get out of this? I mean, other than maybe throwing a spear from Scorpion or a Ryu Fireball? Well, yeah, besides getting the Ryu Fireball, you also get amazing tactile control. So when I was developing cue point juggling, I started getting carpal tunnel from playing bad buttons. Literally, mm -hmm. my wrist started to hurt. So we were looking for cool buttons buttons that not only had an easy feel, but had a rapid-fire response. What better than arcade buttons? Arcade buttons, of course, and road-tested. You know you can spill soda or you know, slam a toddler's face on this when he beats you at Street Fighter, and they're going to stand the test of time. Totally indestructible. Um, and so you are using these now. I mean, obviously, these can be set to whatever functions you want, right? It's MIDI. But on this side of the board, you sort of have these set to hot cues throughout a song. Yep. Basically, what we have is one song here where if I let it play out, you're going to hear the full progression. Mm -hmm. But I've got hot cues set on specific yeah, points. And I can see those this. as they scroll along on your monitor here. I can see you set little sort of flags. This is where you want it to go. Exactly. So you can go back and rearrange it and replay them in a different musical way. Like... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That's awesome. Dude. That's, that's insane. All right, so um, we, we've got that out of the way now. Uh, I feel this is the portion of the cooking show where we go to the oven and here's the souffle. So please uh, bake something for us here. All right, we'll do a little mix and maybe you can even jump in on it and yeah, maybe show us how it's done. Probably not. Probably not. I, but but all please, right. by all means, Ian, let's see it. large section of our audience right now is salivating to get their hands on one of these. What's it going to set them back? Well, this particular controller, because it's custom built, each mm -hmm. one's made by hand. Does right. You cost. can even choose the colors of the buttons and the knobs. Totally choose the co color custom uh, combination. It's $849. Um, Which isn't bad in perspective with a traditional DJ setup, right? No, that would usually set you back about $1,500. Mm -hmm. So it's cheaper than that. If you can't quite break off $849, we do have a, the same controller but without the custom arcade buttons for $549. And then there's a, a really, really scaled down version for those who are just kind of interested in getting started in this, right? Sure. Um, Vestax, the same company that makes uh, the guts for our controller, mm -hmm. actually made a new controller called the Spin, which is in Apple stores now. It's $249. It doesn't do any of the fancy stuff that we've done here today, but it gives you uh, very easy access to mixing two tracks together. Sure. This is an incredible uh, piece of gear, Ian. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on and showing off. <laughs> DJ Ian Golden, everybody. And that's it for Musical Playtime. Thanks for joining us, Olivia. Thank you. And now it's time to talk toys on Attack This. Now, according to Back to the Future, we should have hoverboards very soon. Unfortunately, Robert Zemeckis lied to us and me. But ThinkGeek brings us the Hover Drone, which we'll, I guess, have to do for now. This remote-controlled vehicle is a little larger than a silver dollar, so I don't know why I call it a vehicle, and floats around like a UFO. As the single propeller spins one way, the body of the Hover Drone spins the opposite direction, and thus lift is created. It's quite scientific, if you ask me. The Hover Drone takes 10 minutes to charge and offers you five to seven minutes of flight time. Get your hands on this floating shuttle cock for twenty dollars. You said shuttle. <laughs> if it's a silver dollar, is that really a vehicle? For all you hardcore Rubik's Cubes players out there, this is pretty awesome. I love this. There's been a revolution in your sport, and it's called the Rubik's Touch Cube. This newest edition of the classic 80s game uses touch sensor technology and a motion sensing accelerometer to bring you a completely virtual Rubik's experience. You just simply swipe your finger on the cube to move rows of colors, and if you get stuck, it allows you to undo your moves one step at a time. It will even solve the whole damn thing for you, which is kind of cheating. Now that, it does, it, but you think about it, it does beat peeling all the stickers off and putting them on again in order. I've never done that, because I'm Asian, I don't need to, but the white, you white people, I've seen you do that. So pick up your futuristic Rubik's Cube for $150, so worth it. The innovative Japanese have brought us many things like Godzilla, PlayStation, instant noodles, and now they're at it again, introducing our last item, the G-Bound. This RC may look like something you've seen before, and I would naturally agree, until you see it drive on water. Whoa. What's up now, suckers? The G-Bound uses inflatable rubber balloon tires and a waterproof body, so you can take your off-roading off land and into the freaking lake. Sure, it looks harder than hell to steer on water, but that's not the point, people. It drives on water. It, uh. Unfortunately, they only sell this for a $140 car in Japan, so you have to book your plane ticket now, and then you're... It's not that much. It's like... Depends on if you go first or business, and then there's coach. If you go coach, it's like $800. If you go business or something, it's like five grand. It's completely... It's like, <laughs> Head on over to the all-new G4TV.com slash AOTS for info on all these new releases and more. Stay tuned. Gillian Jacobs from Community. Yeah. She's going to be here live in our studio to learn us about some adult education. Woo. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by the all-new G4TV.com. New. Improved. Awesome. Uh,
Balloon says, Eat me. Baba me, Kalamro. Eat, daughter. I'm going to get you. Community college has long been an affordable alternative to acquiring, like, hundreds and thousands of dollars in student loan debt. On the other hand, though, you have to go to school with people like this. I want you all to write a one-page essay in Espanol entitled Annie's Mistake. Why doesn't Annie have to write it? Okay, two pages entitled The Consequences of Questioning Authority. This is Spanish 101. I, I know how to say hello tomorrow on that table's a female. That's the only Spanish you talk about. Oh, six pages on ignorance. Guys, put your hands down. Senior Chang, please continue. We respect your authority. Thank you, Britta. 20 pages on ass kissing due on Monday. Oh, Mr. Maculo. <laughs> Gillian Jacobs, everybody. Hi. How is your Espanol? Muy malo. Muy malo. Muy malo. Malo is bad, right? Bad. Yeah, very, okay, very, good, very good. Bad. Yeah, but actually, the makeup artist on the show is from South America, so she teaches me a Spanish word a day. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so I'm slowly learning, but I can only say things like para agua, which is umbrella. Uh, or uh, lagartija, which is lizard. So it's not really functional, but it's fun. Right. And, and our audio guy just totally fell in love with you, by the way. So well done. Well Thank done. You, um, you, uh, you did not go to community college, I no, just found out. No, I did not. You went to a little place called Juilliard, I which did. I'm told is like the ITT tech of acting or something? Well, at, my aunt referred to it as the Caltech of theater. Oh, so, that's a lot yeah, more illustrious yeah, than the yeah. ITT. No, uh, sh yeah, my whole family, no one is in the arts, so they didn't quite understand what it was that I was doing, but when they realized that it was really competitive, then they thought it was good. Right. They're like, oh, you beat out a lot of people. That makes it good. Not like, you want to be an artist. Sure. You want to, you know, be a part of the theater. It was like, oh, my cousins were like, how many people apply and how many people get in? And it was a good ratio. So then... then I love good. that that's how they judge the merit, oh. though. It's like, well, how, how, how much better did you do than everybody yeah. else? Okay, now yeah. we love you. 100%. It was solely about the competition and beating out other people. Were you, like, in, in plays and acting young? Yeah. And, and did that bum them out that you weren't like interested in the science fair projects? Like, no baking soda volcano, you're going to do Shakespeare? Yeah, yeah. I remember I was in Honors Advanced Pre-Calculus. Oh! And um, I was doing a play at the same time at night, and so I was having a really hard time with the class. And so I said to my mom, I'm going to drop down to Honors Pre-Calculus. And she had... Oh, shame! I know. It was... How it, dare I, you? I brought dishonor to my family. And uh, <laughs> she had about four of my relatives call me and tell me that I was ruining my oh, life. No. That I was, I was never going to get into the colleges that did I wanted she, to go to. Did she hand you a samurai sword and tell you exactly how to insert? <laughs> yeah, Harry like, Carey. Just, yeah. Yeah, just go know. for it. And was the operating manual that was left discreetly at my bedside. No, no, she was very upset that I dropped out of honors advanced pre-calculus. How dare you? I know, I only made it to, you know, honors calculus. Well, that's a, like, like, that's all right. We can't all be winners in society, no, I guess. No, um, no, how, how often, let me just, let me just, how often do you use the skills that would have been acquired by staying in that higher end class versus the <laughs> acting? I, you know, I probably, like most people, cannot do a single bit of calculus anymore. I, it's like my brain is turned to mush. Why would you, there's an app for that. Yeah, why would you, that's why would you True. To. Who cares? I know this TI 83s that we were using, so antiquated. It's this big. I, what learned, are you... I learned how to play Mario, Tetris, and, and cheat in chemistry with my graphing oh, yeah. calculator. That yeah. was it. No, I had like a caterpillar game on there. <laughs> you and... were hacking your calculator oh, as well? Totally. And there was one kid in my class that was like the Roger Ebert of our school. He had a he had a movie review uh, program on our local cable access channel. <laughs> okay. And Nerd. so instead of trying to cheat, he put a list of all the Oscar nominees for the past 10 years on his TI. 83. I'm sure his parents weren't disappointed with his oh, choices everyone, either. No, yeah. no, we it's fine. We were all failing terribly, <laughs> terribly. Uh, I love that you get you guys actually shoot on a real college campus, though, yeah. right? Yeah, at LA City College, we do a lot of the exteriors for the show, the quad, and so when you see us walking around outside, it's normally there. How many like uh, X-ray metal detecting type machines do you walk through to get to the set? Then is it is it as bad as I imagine community college to be? Um, no, it is not. Although we did shoot at this one high school in LA and. I watched the police pull over a gangbanger, pull him out of his car, tat photograph all of his tattoos, search his car, and then eventually they had to let him go. But I watched like a 10-minute search. And at L.A. City <laughs> College, I looked over. They were about to call action, and they were 
midway through arresting a guy with his arms behind his back, they called action. They froze. The police froze. They held there until we called cut, and then they finished arresting. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. I like that gangbangers respect quiet on the set. Oh, oh no, 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 it's cool. I'll, I'll resist when they're done with this take. I don't want to interrupt that. 100%. Cool. <laughs> the police and the guy, whatever he was doing, they did not want to disrupt our take. Well, that is incredible. Um, you are not on the Twitter, but there is a, a Twitter page for the your character. Twitter, no. We don't have time to talk about it, but I want to get you back here and get you a Twitter account and then talk to you about uh, extending uh, y your love. Of, of fans and gangbangers on set okay. and 140 okay. characters or less. Yeah, so, we can do so that. I can tell the gangbangers how to find me. Exactly. Okay. Uh, retweet you. No. Give them your location. They're fine. They're uh, okay, yeah, that seems really safe, right? It, it, absolutely. I would not lead you astray. Gillian, thank you so much for coming <laughs> oh, on. My pleasure. Absolute pleasure thank meeting you. You. Yeah. you guys, Community airs Thursday nights on NBC, but now someone's still working on a vocational degree. It's Olivia. <laughs> Gillian, he is to be trusted. Trust him. <laughs> Still ahead, more Attack of the Show. Hey! More Attack of the Show. It's going to be good. Stick around. Gillian, run! Coming up tomorrow on an all-new AOTS, we'll go around the net as well as through a cage made of beard hair and down a skee-ball table made out of, well, whatever skee-ball tables are made out of. Then this weekend, Tito Ortiz and Forrest Griffin duke it out in UFC 106. See MMA superstar Nate Quarry and Blair Butler trade jabs over the fight card in MMA chokehold. And we'll revisit an AOTS classic, Gluttony Fest, with professional eater Eric Badlands Booker. See it tomorrow. Tell you in a second. Go to the all new G4TV.com slash AOTS for all the things you saw today. And I was more. Hey, thanks, Gillian Jacobs, for coming on from Community. We appreciate it. That play is going to start right now. Yeah, it is. But How long? Everybody go to Spin in New York. Go to Spin. Go say hi to Spin. Get some pretty moment. shirts. Like, did, yeah. did you modify that shirt or does it come I know, like that? No, I modified it. Now, how'd, so how'd you do that? Walk me through well, that we, process. We, we, it's normally like mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. and then I ripped it. And okay, cut yeah, I'm sorry, it, I'm so sorry. I was like, oh, but go to Spin. Go to Spin. And hey, Susan, seriously, pick up the phone. Susan's on, a plane to, Susan's on a plane right now. When she, they have phones and the, her and I are pulling friends. out of the headrest to call friends. me. It's a big deal. Oh.